Okay, coming up on this edition of the Penn State Blitz, it's time for the Big Ten Media Days in Chicago. Penn State will be there very shortly. We're going to talk about storylines in the Big Ten East, the Big Ten West, and with Penn State. We're also going to talk about James Franklin and what he might have to say during his time in Chicago. Penn State also has three players making appearances in Chicago. We'll get to maybe what they might be thinking. And also, it can't be a Penn State blitz without the Penn State mailbag. It's that time of year. It Chicago is. Chicago is calling our names. Mm -hmm. Before, uh, I just want the fans to know that I've alerted uh, the local authorities in Chicago <laughs> that Greg will be there. I spent all summer saving up bail money just in case you get in trouble. Great. I'm hoping you don't. Uh, but there's really a lot to get to in Chicago. Penn State will be there for two days. Mm -hmm. We really get them for one. Right. But just some of the storylines this year. Last year, uh, you know, we didn't really see it coming, but mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a huge event with Urban Meyer and some things he said or didn't say that got him in trouble and ultimately, I think, led him to get getting suspended. Right. I don't think James Franklin has to worry about that this no. year. At least I hope not. But just as we look at the 2019 season, and maybe mm -hmm. not just Penn State, but the Big Ten overall, what do you think are, is kind of maybe kind of dominate the discussion? Out yeah, there? I think you know two things really jump out. It's the year of the defensive end with mm -hmm. the kid from Iowa. Is it Espensa? I believe is how it's AJ Epinesa. Epinesa. Okay, name. there we go. Uh, Chase Young from Ohio State, yep. and of course Etor Grossmanos from Penn State. Mm -hmm. So I think you'll hear plenty about that, even though those three guys won't be there. Don't the forget thing, about Kenny Willis. Of, yeah, from uh, Michigan, Michigan State. State. That's right. Uh -huh. And then the other, it's year of the quarterback transition, right? right? You have Justin Fields at Ohio State, Sean Clifford at Penn State. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, Shea Patterson returns at Michigan, but you have Hunter Johnson transferring in at Northwestern. Mm -hmm. There's some other schools looking for quarterbacks as well. So, I mean, you do get the two returners in Michigan with Shea Patterson and Brian Lewerke, but for mm -hmm. the most part, you know, some pretty big conference teams are looking for their new passers. I have one theory that I will be – positing throughout the summer and in the early fall. I am starting to get convinced that this year is, is the beginning of the Big Ten West, not only catching up to the Big Ten East, but I think top to bottom, they're actually going to be better in a year or two. I think you're going to start to see the roots of that this year. The, Wisconsin and Iowa and even Northwestern have always been pretty solid teams, but I have a feeling uh, Scott Frost at Nebraska – uh, and even P.J. Fleck at Minnesota, and uh, also Jeff Brom at Purdue. Mm -hmm. When you look at that conference from top to bottom in the seven teams, Illinois is a throwout. Right. But in the Big Ten East, Rutgers is a throwout, too. It's always been assumed that the Big Ten East was always better, and it's always actually been assumed they're the, maybe the best conference in America. I don't know if that, I don't know that division in America. I don't mm -hmm. know if that's true anymore. And I think, I think this is the year you're going to see the Big Ten West catch up to the Big Ten East, Greg. And I think very soon they're going to pass it. I don't know how do you feel about that. I, yeah, I'm not really on the same page with you there. I think Wisconsin takes a step back this year. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, Iowa has a lot of good returning talent, but are they just the Iowa of old? Or, you know, mm -hmm. is this the year that they maybe get back to the Big Ten title game? It's a question that will be answered, obviously, a few months from now. You know, to me, I could see it more along the lines of Minnesota. The team, couple of teams you mentioned mm -hmm. replacing Wisconsin and maybe Iowa mm -hmm. at the top, Northwestern. Will kind of always be in that conversation, but if they go nine and five again, or if they were last year, then it doesn't really matter. So, yeah, I don't know about that. I could see more of a changing of the guard on the Big Ten West as opposed mm -hmm. to a, a sh you know a shooting ahead of the Big Ten East. It, it is interesting though; they're going to have as much talent on that side as they've had in a long time. I'm just hoping it's okay if you want to disagree with me because once in a while you're right. If I hear <laughs> Dave Jones agree with me on this, then you're going to have to change your stance. Season, I'm going to have to retract the statement and say the Big Ten East is best. Let's move along, though. Penn State's going to be out there. James Franklin is now in his sixth year. He knows kind of how to play the game in Chicago very well. Um, I'm just curious to get your thoughts, maybe what not only the, the Penn State beat writers, but also the national beat writers are going to, because yeah. there's a lot of opportunities to talk to James, yeah. a couple different press conferences. Mm -hmm. What do you think he's going to be asked about? Yeah, he always gets hit on recruiting out in Chicago, mm -hmm. whether it be from Penn State writers or from the national yeah. media. I think it's just because he's had so much success doing it, and he always seems to be willing to talk about the rules right. and how it impacts him and the coaches and the players and all that. So I think you can expect to hear him talk a lot about that. 
obviously life with Trace McSorley, without Trace McSorley rather, will be a hot talking point for him. Mm -hmm. And it won't surprise me if he gets hammered on the 3-12 and 12 mark against Michigan, Michigan State, and Ohio State. I don't think it'll be a large portion of his time at the mm -hmm. podium, but, you know, they don't have Trace to fill time. They don't have Saquon yeah. Barkley to fill time. Which, uh, fill time in the sense that he get a lot of questions about those two the last couple of years. That won't be the case this fall. So something's going to so this uh, this summer leading into this fall. So something's going to have to replace that. And I think those could be a couple of the topics that we hear about. Yeah, and there's only so much he's going to say about recruiting, but all the decommitments, the fact that Julian Fleming verbal to Ohio State, he won't address that specifically. Correct. But the theme is going to be, hey, look, the top the top player in the state, and uh, you know, one of the top players in the country who a lot of people thought was going to go mm -hmm. to your program maybe three or four months ago, yeah. went to one of your rivals, and how? what's the perception there? Why, why do you think that is? Right. Something along those lines. I do also think that at some point he's going to have to say something st substantial about Tommy Stevens. Yeah. I think he's going to be asked about that, especially by the national guys. And I, I, I don't think it's enough for him to say, well, we're moving forward. We're talking about the guys on the roster. We're really excited about Sean Clifford and Will Levis. He will say all of that, but I'll be curious to say if he actually goes into any detail about maybe, A, the conversation that he had with Tommy, and B, when was it in his mind and in the mind of Ricky Ronnie that he was going to open up the competition? Obviously, right. when he was asked that question after the blue-white game, he knew it was coming. Mm -hmm. and he, he knew exactly what he wanted to say. So right. let's just see if he sheds any light on what happened with Tommy Stevens. Uh, Tommy Stevens is now at Mississippi State, obviously, Greg, but three players who are at Penn State and expected to play big roles, Cam Brown, mm -hmm. the senior linebacker, John Reed, the senior corner, yeah. Blake Gillikin, the senior punter, they're going to be out there. Uh, excuse me, at uh, in Chicago. Any thoughts on what they're going to be dealing with? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, John Reed will get a lot of off-field questions in the sense that he completed an internship for the second year in a row, was away from the program for a while um, to do that, and of course they backed that, that choice and that decision. So I think you'll hear him talk a lot about that. I think with Cam Brown, you know, obviously, and another thing with John Reed, too, will be the recovery from the knee injury right. that, you know, kind of slowed his progress maybe a year ago, at least for the first half of the season. With Cam Brown, I think it's a weight, you know, there'll be a lot about the weight he put on. He'll be asked endlessly about Micah Parsons, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I think both of those guys will field questions about Jason Oway because I think after he made Bruce Feldman's freaks list, it's going right. to be a lot of people. Him and Micah Parsons. Right. So I think you have a lot of folks curious about those two that maybe aren't as tuned in the Penn State um, situation, I guess you could say. What is, uh, you know, the upside for those guys? And then with Gilligan, I think, you know, there's a lot of curiosity about who Joe Lorig is, what he actually brings to this program, and how he's going to mm. fix a special teams group that really struggled in a lot of different areas last year. Yeah, I think Blake Gillen, Gilligan is one of the most talented punters in the country. He hasn't always been consistent, mm -hmm. but I think when he's been good, I think Penn State's really been you know, a really tough team to beat because yeah. of the kicking game. I think he's had a couple of games last year that, that did not go so well for him, and it really cost Penn State. But mm -hmm. I look for him to take a step forward. I think, I think the questions that Cam Brown and John Reed – should be asked about is the defense being able to close out games. You right. look at the last two meetings with Michigan State and you look at the last two meetings with Ohio State. Right. Four close games, four super close games, four losses. Penn State could have easily won all four games mm -hmm. and it's a much different narrative, I right. think, oh, absolutely. about Penn State and kind of where they're headed mm -hmm. and what they're doing. And instead of being three and 12, you know, against the, uh, excuse me, right. against Ohio State, Michigan, and Michigan State. I'm doing yep. the math here. I think they're seven and five. They win all four games. So I, I just think that, you know, they're getting a lot of pub for the speed, and, and, you know, they're supposed to be a much improved defense. But I'm just curious what they think they have to do differently and how they're going to prevent maybe some of the, really, some of the most painful losses of the Franklin era. I think right. you're going to see Cam and John asked about that. Okay, one more segment, Greg. I know it's your favorite. Yes. So it's the Penn State mailbag. Mm -hmm. spare, spare, just you can ask me whatever you want. All right. Well, I won't, you kinda, I won't shy away from you that. You kind of already went down this road, but a bold prediction for the Big Ten West and a bold prediction for the Big Ten East. Yeah, I was this close to picking Minnesota to win the Big Ten West. Um, but I think that they are going to be – they're a team that went 3-1 and one down the stretch. Mm -hmm. They beat uh, Wisconsin. I think in Wisconsin they walloped yeah. Georgia Tech in the bowl game. One of the youngest teams in the country. They have a lot of players back. I looked at their schedule. I think they're going to be in the Big Ten West race to the very end. Mm -hmm. I have them second. Uh, and I think that is I, – I actually kind of like Nebraska a little bit. I just think the other teams are missing some, some key components. I'm a big fan of Adrian Martinez, their quarterback. Mm -hmm. But I do think that Minnesota is going to really open some eyes in the Big Ten West. That's my bold prediction. In the East? 
Well, in the East, the team that I, one of the teams that I'm really interested to watch is going to be Maryland, just mm -hmm. because I think that uh, Mike Loxley can recruit. Um, I think he's already started to upgrade the talent base. Um, if you look at last year, they almost they should have probably beat Ohio State. Um, they really run hot and cold. Sometimes they show up. Sometimes they don't. Consistency is going to be an issue. Yeah. But I just look for they, that's a little bit of a tricky game for Penn State this year. They got to play on a Friday night. Right. At Maryland, I'm sure Maryland remembers losing 66 to three mm -hmm. two years ago, and Penn State also hammered them yeah. last year. Right. I just wonder if maybe Maryland is a team to watch. I'm not going to watch anything about Rutgers, and from a curiosity factor, um, as the season unfolds, Greg, I just think watching Josh Fields, the former Penn State yeah. verbal, and see how he how he kind of uh, develops at Ohio State, and if he's the guy when. When Penn State plays them, to me that fascinates me as well. Yeah, I think the the things to watch beyond that would be, of course, Josh Gaddis at Michigan in his Good. first year as offensive coordinator. On the west side, I'm a little bit interested in Iowa. I think that team might be a little bit better than it looks on paper. They return a lot. Um, we'll you know what I'm going to tell you. You know what I'm going to tell you. Yeah, I'll, go ahead. I can't unsee what that quarterback did last year. No, at that's State true. College. I yeah. cannot. I can't unsee it. <laughs> Nate Stanley returns as well. That could be more. Good I, than, bad I mean, than they good. might be Penn State this year, but that guy. Woo, they should have beat him last year in State College. All right. I uh, got one for you. Okay, yeah. For the Penn State fans out there, real quick, three things to do in Chicago if they ever go to, like, a Penn State Northwestern uh -huh. game or they ever just want to visit the city. Three must-see must, uh, must things must on the checklist. you got to do it. What are your top three? Wrigleyville, Pequods, and, boy, the third one's tough. I mean, we'd be going to Arlington Park, but that can be a little bit tough. It's the Billy. The Billy Goat, yes, there you go. That's it. So what are they? The Billy Goat, Pequods, and Wrigleyville. Billy there Goat go. Tavern, downtown yes. Chicago, Pequods for deep dish pizza. Mm -hmm. And what was the third thing? Wrigleyville. you got to go to Wrigleyville. That's yes. it. Greg Pickle giving you, the uh, the viewer, uh, a travel guide for Chicago. I just hope that he makes it out of this weekend in 100% in shape.